Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the channel. My name is Tony and today we're doing a review for War on the Sea. Before we start, remember if you like this video, smash that like button, drop a sub if you enjoyed it and share it if you think anyone might find it valuable. So without further ado, let's get on with it. War on the Sea is a strategy simulation World War II naval combat game taking place above, on and below the sea. It features real-time naval combat. You can play as the Allied Forces or Imperial Japan. There's over 50 classes of playable ships. There's a dynamic campaign. I'm not too sure about that. <laughs> Tactical control of aircraft, but it's not a flight simulator. You can fight fires, counter flood compartments and repair ships. Sink ships use realistic buoyancy physics and historical missions based on actual naval engagements. And how much is all this going to cost you? Well, it's going to cost you the grand total of £30.99 or around about $41. Yes, that is very expensive, but in the sphere of simulation strategy games, especially in World War II, World War I, it's about average. You'll find a lot of games around about £30. I mean, modern combat operations and naval, that game I played a few times on the channel, that was £60.99. So one of the first things I want to talk about is this game is not in early access, but the developers are treating it like it is. And it's a trend we're seeing without going on a huge rant in modern gaming. They're kind of going, yeah, we have a game to release. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Full price. Don't worry about it. Play it, play it, play it. And you buy it and go, hang on a minute. Where's all the content? And they go, ah, well, we're going to add all that in later. But to me, that's why early access exists. That's why alphas exist and betas and stuff. So you can go, all right, I'm paying $30.99 for a game. Fine. I know it's an alpha. I know the content's coming. I know they're going to improve things. I know they're going to change things because that's what an alpha is. It's a time for the developer to really focus on going, right, here's the game, guys. Enjoy it. Let us know what's wrong. And then... We'll add the features in before we release to the full public. And then usually the price goes up and that sort of thing. If you read a lot of reviews, a lot of people go, hang on a minute. Where's all the content? Why is this game buggy? Why is it a mess? Where is this all this stuff we got promised? And all they had to do was stick an early access along it, put it into early access. I think they would have had way more better reviews. People would have known exactly what they were getting into. But instead, you just have a community that was very split very confused and a lot of people that bought it and just fed up and not playing it let's talk a little bit about the gameplay so it's played in two kind of ways one is the overall map where you manage your units build fleets plan your routes so say you want to take some supplies to an island you can plan that out you can plan formations you can deploy aircraft so if you want to do a bit of a scouting mission or a bombing run and you stay in that mode and plan, you can like fast forward time until an encounter happens. So an encounter could be there's enemy torpedoes in the water, there's a submarine, there's a surface group, there's an aeroplane. And at that point, you got to go into engagement. The only engagement you can skip is if it's just a seaplane with no weapons. You don't have to go into them. You can just ignore them and be like, yeah, okay, because it just kind of buzzes around you. Once an encounter starts, it goes into RTS view, and then you start the engagement from there. So once here and there, you get full control over your ships. You can control the guns. You can load certain ammo types. You can set to attack. You can set turn sonars on. You can, if you're in a submarine, you can start plotting your depth or if you're in a plane you can do your altitude and heading and you can start planning your attack oh, of course in my case a lot of the time planning where the hell i'm gonna run to so yeah once you're in rts view and you've got to see the battle out in that so until there's a conclusion or you retreat once you press the retreat button there's a certain amount of time before you can retreat so you can just press it instantly if you want to so just bear in mind there is that cool down time before you can leave the battle. And also once you're in RTS mode, it is real time, obviously. But you can pause it and you can speed time up as long as you're not attacking. So say there's some torpedoes in the water, you can't then speed up time. You've got to play it in real time. So the pros, what I really liked was the diving torpedo bombers were a lot of fun. So just watching them dive down drop the torpedoes in the water and just watching things blow up is always good. And talk about blowing things up, lining up that perfect submarine ambush, just having your submarine waiting there. 
just watching the enemy fleet coming towards you and then firing off six torpedoes with spreads and watching them blow up is just so much fun. And because of them buoyancy physics, when you like sink them, like you'll just watch them go up and then sink down to the depths and you can look underwater as well so you can just watch them sink in. And the damage model, although not the best, you'll see little fires and the ship will start a list when it's taken on water. So if you do like one or two hits, you can go, oh, that's listing quite badly. So you might choose to hit it again just to take it down. When you AA and the aircraft opens up on enemy aircraft, it looks so good. All the smoke trails in the sky and just watching planes crashing into the water. Never, ever gets old. And also hunting submarines, even though a little bit frustrating, just when you finally get that enemy submarine, drop your depth charges and blow it out of the water. It just looks incredible. So much fun to see. So yeah, it's uh, the constantly updating and bringing out bug fixes. I think it has great potential to expand as well. There's only two campaigns at the moment. I'm hoping to see that expand with loads and loads of different battles, loads of new ships. And I think it has a platform to be able to do that. There's also a good amount of ships from the Pacific Theater. The tutorials are actually quite good. The tutorial teaches you well. It doesn't leave you wanting too much. Uh, tactical combat is quite engaging once you get into it and detailed. So I said before, the ships will list. There's fires. And when you're doing that, you can actually choose to flood a compartment on the other side of your ship to balance it out. Or if you're sort of like tilting forward, flood the back end. And you can like flood around fires. And just watching that damage control take place and the fires going out as you do is a lot of fun so yeah i really like that aspect of it as well and there you go that's the pros <laughs> right moving on to the cons well there's a lot of cons a lot of them are kind of a bit nitpicky that could be resolved so yeah one of the biggest problems i have with this game outside of the early access banner is micromanagement and things like the ai of your units are just non-existent you've got to micromanage so much of them like subs and ships do not take any self preservation measures so like if there's a torpedo coming towards them they won't go ah okay I'll, I'll maybe move they'll just stay that course and get hit say if they're going towards each other they'll just go uh, I could I could move but I could just ram it yeah should we just ram it yeah we'll ram into each other and it's like oh come on there should be a little bit there just to go right we'll just stop that <laughs> not hit each other so yeah, you've got to like turn every single ship's radar on, every sonar on. You've got to micromanage every single movement, every single gun thing. So what do you want the guns to do? And there's no just general fleet orders just to go, right, I want you to, everyone to attack that ship, everyone to retreat, everyone to do that. You've got to go, right, I want you to do that, you do that, you do that, you do that, you do that. And that can get a little bit tedious after a while. Um one feature which i hate which they haven't put in is you can't launch aircraft or recover aircraft from aircraft carriers during combat what is the point in that so if you're going to enter a battle you've got to launch your aircraft before you get into it you can't just like get into it and go oh no 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 i've got torpedo bombers let's get some um let's get some aircraft up you can't do it you've got to do it from the map screen before you go ahead and i think that is just a terrible feature battles can take such a long time as well you can speed up to five times as i said when you're not in a battle when using the periscope on submarines there's no kind of ui on the scope see like like when you play submarine games you've got to lead your torpedoes because obviously ships are moving but because there's no ui on that uh, display you can't do that it's just a periscope for blank screen so you don't know if like your torpedoes are going to hit and stuff which i know you build solutions and stuff but again i would like that option if the solution's not building to just do it myself and go right okay i want to aim there because i can calculate the speed and the time the ship's going to get there and hit them so yeah i would like to see that ships don't get xp um and also i would like to see some sort of maybe admiral or captain that you can assign to your ships and give them maybe a boost or bonus or if your ship survives a long time i want to kind of get decorated and go yes that's my super ship it's awesome 
Another one of the big problems with this game is the UI. It is terrible. It's probably one of the worst UIs I've ever seen in a game like this. Nothing's particularly intuitive or where you're clicking or what you're doing. You do get used to it after a while, but I think there needs to be a lot of changes surrounding that UI, where buttons are placed, how it's set out, and how it's engaging as well. I'd like to see loads more options there. So yeah, be prepared when you're going into this that that UI is a little bit rubbish. Smoke screens don't exist, so when you're trying to disengage, you can't just throw a smoke screen up and disengage, which I would like to see. I know Ultimate Admiral Dreadnought has that. Ships do not, and this is annoying as hell, don't pick a new target once a ship is sunk. Like, it'll just sit there going blah, 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 and just chill out. Um, and there's just loads more of things like that. But for me, the fundamental ones are micromanagement. I think that... Um, that could do just been eased a lot for my purposes. Or maybe just a choice. Maybe you can micromanage or not micromanage. If you want to go full micromanagement, fine. But yeah, let's see a lot more AI of your units uh, identifying things, doing things on their own. Because there is a lot to look at at once. So I say this occasionally with some games, and this is definitely one of them, where the developer's forgotten that it's a game and it should be fun. And too often when I'm playing this, I feel like it's a chore and I'm like, oh, great, another battle. Or, oh, great, I've got to do everything myself yet again. So, yeah, I would like them just to maybe put a few more gamey aspects in it and just make it a little bit more fun in parts. And yeah, that's kind of an overall look at this game. I want to keep it a bit shorter, but be prepared if you're going to get into this game. The cons are there. It's not an early access, so you don't know if any of these things are coming. And it can be quite frustrating at times. But other times, it can go uh, superb when you see all the flak going up in the sky. There's torpedo, there's shells going everywhere, explosions. It can look really good. So I hope you enjoyed this review, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Goodbye.